Hi, welcome to another episode of BizJet TV. My name is Fabrizio Poli, I'm your host, and today we're going to be talking about supersonic. Yes, one of my favorite subjects. Uh, question, has the virus killed the supersonic, supersonic air travel? We know that the virus has killed a few airlines and left a lot of people without work, unfortunately. Um, that's the economic side of the virus, and that's what we're focusing on today. We're going to be looking at three supersonic projects today. Uh, I have touched on this subject before. Uh, we're going to look and see how they're faring through the virus. Um, are these projects still going ahead? And then towards the end of the video, you will actually hear my take on where I would put my money out of the three projects. So let's get straight into it here. If you haven't subscribed to Bizjet TV, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Give us a thumbs up and please comment below. Let's get the chatter going here about supersonic air travel. Off we go into the episode. Let's go. So as we know, one of the uh, biggest hits um, of the coronavirus, economically speaking, has been on the airline industry. Um, you know, airlines haven't been able to fly as often as they could because of the lockdown. Uh, some passenger airlines have pivoted and started to fly cargo, which I think is a very clever idea uh, to, to do that. Um, and, you know, before this whole pandemic started, there was a lot of talk about supersonic and coming back to supersonic. We've seen the the FAA is starting to change the rules on supersonic air travel over the United States, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, as this, this, And I did say when President Trump got elected that uh, we would see supersonic come back during his term uh, because he understands aviation and understands business aviation and um, also because technology is evolving. And so they are starting to solve the problems surrounding the sonic boom. So um, there are three projects in the running at the moment. Uh, Spike Aerospace with their S512, Aerion AS2 uh, that has investment from Boeing and Boom XB1, which already have uh, orders for uh, 30 aircraft between Japan Airlines and Virgin Atlantic. So, and that Virgin Atlantic means Richard Branson. So uh, let's have a look at these three projects and see where they're going. Um, now, the coronavirus has not killed either of these projects. It's maybe slowed down one or two. Um, but let's just look at what they're looking to, to do, what they are doing and uh, what the market is and, and what my prediction is regarding these three projects. The first one we're going to hone on is uh, Spike Aerospace. Um, now, their airplane is going to be uh, flying at Mark 1.6, which is 1.6 uh, times the speed of sound, carrying 18 passengers over 6,200 nautical miles. Uh, it's, it's a private jet, so it's very interesting as you can see. Uh, they claim that it's going to be 14% more expensive to run than a Goldstream G650, but obviously a lot faster. Um, Spike Aerospace are uh, looking to start building a prototype. They haven't actually started yet. Um, they've raised a bit of money here and there, and they're working away at their thing. Uh, their claim is also uh, the looking at reducing the um, the, the sonic boom. Uh, now, the way this was measured on Concorde, it's Concorde used to generate 105 perceived decibel. Well, Spike Aerospace, on their project, what they're working is bringing in that number from 105, which it was on Concorde, to have 75 perceived de decibels on the Spike S512. So that's where they're going. The price tag of the aircraft is going to be about $125 million. Let me go to Aerion AS2, which has been the, the, the longest of the three projects that's been out there for, for quite a while. They've changed the design a number of times. They're now into three engines, Delta Wing. I did a video a few weeks ago, which you can click up, uh, on the link above, about their new factory they're starting to build in Melbourne, Florida, which is really good news that they've raised that money to build the factory. Uh, the aircraft, um, the company also have had investment from Boeing, which is also another good one, another plus for Aerion. Uh, the airplane will be flying at about Mark 1.4, carrying eight to 10 passengers across 4,200 to 5,400 nautical mile range. Uh, price tag about $120 million. Uh, that's interesting, we'll be built in Florida. Um, so this is an interesting news there for Arion, um, the deal with with Boeing and also the fact that they're building, uh, they're gonna start building, they haven't built anything yet, they're gonna start building a prototype over in Melbourne, Florida. And the third one is uh, Boom Aerospace, the XB1 or Overture as it's called. Uh, this is an airplane which is going to be uh, tailored for the airlines, but can be very easily turned into a private jet. 
Um, and if you want to speak specifically about that to me, I encourage you to ping me an email. I can book you in for a call and we can see how we can do that. I work with a number of designers um, and we can come up with a nice design for, for the interior. But as a passenger aircraft for airlines, uh, we're looking at flying at Mark 2.2, the, so the fastest of the three jets, carrying 55 to 75 passengers, which is which is good. Over stretch of four and a half thousand nautical miles, which is good. Um, as I said before, uh, this company, Bomerospace, already have orders from Japan Airlines and Virgin Atlantic for a total of 30 aircraft. And it's good that these two airlines are coming in there. They're, they're looking at, um, there's about 500 daily routes that can be flown by this aeroplane. And we're talking, there is a market for about 1,000 of them. Well, when we talk about specifically private jets, there's probably a market for maybe three to 400 of these supersonic private jets. But be very careful because Boom Aerospace will enter into the, the, the private jet market and they could, you know, hinder Aero and AS, AS2 project or the Spike Aerospace project. Now, is there a market for all three of these aircraft? And what's my take? Well, I think um, uh, this is a very interesting market. I do think that speed is the way to go. As I've said before, keep an eye on Elon Musk because he wants to fly people with rockets from anywhere to anywhere in less than an hour. And, and obviously rocket transportation will only take 35 minutes or supersonic, maybe two and a half hours. So the rocket's going to be fast. I don't see people buying their private rocket, uh, but certainly, in, and, and, and there'll probably be about, you know, as I said before on a video, click on the video above, I talk about Elon Musk's project with, with the rockets, but that's not going to be for everybody. Not everybody's going to be able to fly on a rocket. Not everybody will fly on a rocket because they'll be afraid of flying on a rocket. So the supersonic aircraft or hypersonic, assuming we get into hypersonic next, and there are a few people thinking about that, but I think supersonic is the next step for us. So these three projects are the ones to watch. The one I would personally put money on out of the three, if I had to choose, would be Boom Aerospace. And for the simple reason, first of all, it's being developed for the airlines. So there's more of a market. We're talking 1,000. Um, so if they do build 1,000 of these, the price will come down. Uh, the fact that they've got firm order from Japan Airlines and Virgin Atlantic, even though Aerion do have orders from uh, from Flexjet, which is good, I think, for 20. Uh, that's good for the Aerion project. But, you know, Boom Aerospace and moving into the airline space, um, now, the airlines will eventually recover. I mean, we're not talking about operating these aircraft next year. This is like five years down the line. So I think the airlines will manage to recover by then. Uh, but certainly speed is something that, you know, more and more people are going to want. You know, I think what this pandemic has done is uh, made a lot of people realize how online shopping is just a lot quicker, more convenient than going to the store. And this in people's minds, you know, builds in the whole concept of speed. And so, you know, I think out of these three projects also, I think the one that's going to come to market sooner and here, Boom Aerospace are already building a one third scale model. Uh, it's already being built currently now, as you can see in their hangar. Um, and so this will be flying soon, uh, which is good. Uh, they've also teamed up with flight research over in Mojave uh, to do all the flight testing. Um, and so it's interesting. They've got that in place. They've got infrastructure in place. And as I said, you know, with a thousand airliners being produced, I can easily see um, Boom Aerospace, you know, converting some of these airliners into a private jet with a, with a private jet interior, which obviously is going to have a lot more space than the AS2 and the, and the Spike S512. Um, so, you know, but let's keep an eye on all three. Um, uh, Arian, of course, with Boeing behind them, stand a good chance. Spike slightly behind there. But a lot of this is going to be down to speed of production. Who's going to be, which aeroplane is going to be the one that's going to be certified first? Uh, so the first one to market. Um, I, as I said, I don't see a market for all three of these companies. I think one or two. Um, but if Boom Aerospace managed to bring their uh, Boom Air Overture to the market quickly, uh, then I think we're going to see a lot of success. And I can see a lot of people saying, you know what, I want a private jet version of that aeroplane. You know, it flies at Mark 2.2. It's faster, faster than the others. Yes. Price tag is higher, but it's also got a, a roomier interior. And I think that's going to be a plus. Uh, and also with the fact that they're going to be building so many simulator training, pilot training is going to be a lot cheaper. Um, all these airlines are going to have infrastructure in place around the world to service this airplane. And that is another thing that you have to look at when you buy an airplane is the, the maintenance infrastructure around the world. If your airplane does break and believe me, airplanes do break. How quick is it for, to get a spare part to your airplane and fix it and get it back up in the air? because you know time is money so these are all things you need to look at and i think this is why boom aerospace i think out of the three is ahead of the game but anyway if you want to have a specific conversation about your needs and that 
I encourage you to uh, send me an email and I can book you in for a consultancy call and see where we can take it from there for you. And if you haven't subscribed to Bizjet TV, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Check the other videos I've done about aircraft of the future and where we're going. Lots of information there. Lots of interesting things coming out. Also check this uh, recent um, interview I did uh, about AI and how AI is going to be rolled into uh, the aircraft of the future. And certainly AI will play quite a big role in the development of these three supersonic aircraft. And that's all for Fabrizio Poli on Bizjet TV. And I'll see you on the next one.